everybody. So, what's up? Um, I'm wearing the perfect t-shirt today for it, so I figured I might as well break down and do it. Sorry about the camera angle, but all the same, I hope you can ignore these rolls of shirt and fat and uh, enjoy this video a little bit. Um, so I was asked to do a, um, a review on the recent Harry Potter book, but before I start and begin, I want to say um, this review is going to have a lot of spoilers. This review is going to spoil some pretty big things in the book, so if you don't want them to be ruined, and I mean absolutely ruined because I'm going to cover uh, parts, of, uh, some of the more important parts of the story to you, please do not watch this. Please go out and get the book first, rent it, buy it, do something before you watch this. I personally believe it is definitely worth going out and spending $20 on. The main purpose I am doing this review is to have a discussion. I'd like to hear what you guys think about the book as well. I'm not gonna tell you it's a crappy book. Uh, it's Harry Potter and I love Harry Potter. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna tell you to not get the book. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, you'll feel the same way. You're gonna go out and get it regardless. I couldn't go out and get the book myself um, at the midnight premiere because I had to work all weekend, but my fiance was nice enough to go out and get it. He said he was at Barnes and Noble from 12.05 to one o'clock in the morning, just standing in line to purchase this book and it was pouring down rain. Very awesome and sweet thing of him to do for me. So without further ado, let's get comfy and let's have a discussion about this book. The book is not written like the rest of the books, the previous books before it. Um, it's not even really a book, it's a script, right? Like it's a play. And she was awesome enough to release it the day after the play had um, premiered um, in London. So, you know, rather than having a lot of description in the book, you're pretty much basing everything off your own, you know, brain, like all of your imagination. Most of the locations used in the play are locations we've already seen in the books or in the movies. Um, Hogwarts, uh, you know, King's Crossing, Platform 9 and 3 quarters, Hogsmeade, um, I believe the Malfoy's home is even used. Um, these places, most of them, we've already seen. We already have a picture in our head of what they look like. However, there are some new locations added. Uh, two of them that come to mind are the, there's a nursing home, the nursing home for the witches and wizards, and uh, the home of the potters. There is minimal, um, there is a very small minimal amount of scenery that we see or that we would see in the play that is new to us, which is, I think, a plus uh, for those of us who can't fly over to London and are way across the pond. Those of us who can't fly over to London, we are at least comforted by the fact that there's not a lot of new locations to try and imagine. Because even though the, the script is very... Uh, it, it, it is very filling and it's very, it's an easy read and it is very similar to the books. It's written very similar to the books. Um, it is not as descriptive, so you're not getting as big of a description in writing as you would in, a book, in one of the uh, previous books if it was written as a book. I, I rather enjoyed the plot. Um, it was a little predictive for me. Um, especially closer to the end because which I mean everybody's gonna say that yeah I felt like after being halfway through the book and um, for Scorpius and Albus to have basically made it back from that horror of um, time traveling and all that to me that was too easy, I guess, so I knew there was a bigger picture. I mean, you've got more than half the, you've got about half the book left. And, um, you know, they've already solved the big problem and had a big adventure. That just wasn't, it didn't feel right, I guess. I didn't enjoy how, uh, like, okay, so after that, then Harry finds out they're looking for the kids and Harry and talks to the centaur and he tells Harry that there's a dark cloud around Albus and 
Harry automatically assumes it's Scorpius because there's a possibility that he could be Voldemort's son. And um, that was kind of original as well for me, like uh, the fact that, you know, of course, this main bad guy could have a child. Um, but anyway, as soon as that came about, I had my suspicions to begin with um, involving Delphi. I'm sorry, but Delphi just did not sit right with me. For her to just appear out of nowhere, legitly out of nowhere, she appeared, and to just be all gung-ho and talking to these, I think they're 14 at the time, but 14-year-olds about all this serious stuff and being all gung-ho and stuff and, and, and helping them do whatever. I didn't, she didn't sit right with me to begin with. And that's possibly the way it's supposed to be. That's possibly the way, um, you know, that, that may be what JK wants us to um, believe. But, and, ju and again, just the lines is what we're seeing. I'm not, I wasn't, you know, I haven't seen the play, I haven't seen the actress actually play the character. But the way the character is written is just all short sorts of shade, like shady as fuck. Excuse my language, but she was. Um, so I kind of already was like, okay, yeah, dark cloud around Albus. It is definitely this bitch. Like she's got some shit up her fucking sleeves. But um, it wasn't really an emotional story for me. Um, and I think that's because we don't really get the time to build a bond to Albus and the rest of the kids. Um, I'm a little disappointed that the story completely focused on Albus. Um, I'm glad we got to know Scorpius, um, who is, you know, Malfoy's son. Um, I'm really glad we got to know him. Um, but James and Lily and the younger of the Weasley kids is kind of left out in senses. Um, like you you hear about James and James has some lines uh, but Lily she's in the beginning of it and then you don't really hear from her um, you don't really hear from the younger Weasley kid at all and I'm not really sure how old he's supposed to be um, Rose is in it quite a lot or at least in the actor that plays Rose is in it a lot um, which is really awesome but um, I think it's just, I don't know, it's a little offsetting not hearing from these other kids and it completely focusing on um, Albus and his relationship with Harry. But that's also a good thing because, you know, those two things, these two characters kind of play off a lot. Um, especially if... Albus is the only one that kind of assists in doing something big like this. Um, with that being said, along with it not being very emotional for me, um, a friend has already talked to me about it and has told me he kind of thinks that uh, the whole play could do without the scenes involving Hagrid. And uh, these scenes specifically being a flashback scene of Hagrid telling Harry he's a, a wizard at the um, shack on the island and um, also um, him finding Harry's family after uh, the tragedy on Godric Hollow. Um, I would agree that the scene involving um, Hagrid telling Harry he's a wizard doesn't really need to be replayed. Um, pretty much everybody knows the story of Harry Potter. Um, so everybody knows that scene. That's one of the big scenes that everybody knows. Um, however, the scene in which Hagrid finds Harry's parents and Harry, I think that is needed because I actually didn't feel any emotional tie to the storyline until that point. Because right before that point, um, Harry and his family, friends and family, are, you know, watching, um, getting ready to watch Voldemort destroy Harry's family. And this is something that, um, if we remember, was Harry's worst fear come to life. Like, this is something when the, Dement when the Dementors uh, neared Harry 
and focused on him, Harry would hear their, the screams of his parents and, um, or the, his mother's screams. And that's a big deal. Like Harry is not just hearing this through a Dementor now, he's going to watch it and hear it himself. Um, he actually got to watch his mother beg for his life and I think that's the biggest deal there. Um, it's a very emotional thing for not only Harry to do, but for his friends and family to stand up with him and stand with him during that moment, I think is a big deal. And I think the fact that Hagrid, um, you know, that they, they um, described Hagrid um, finding uh, Harry's family I think was a big deal because it kind of showed that Harry not only has friends standing and helping him now, but he's always had that since he was, you know, he's always been loved. And, um, you know, I think that's a big deal. And I think that was really what kind of connected me to the story. Um, with that being said, it was kind of anticlimactic in the sense that um, they just kind of arrested the bad guy, you know. Um, to me, I think that uh, I'm, and this may just be me, but, um, Azkaban is, is kind of, uh, is kind of like, ooh, you know, are you sure you want to put them in there because people have escaped from there before? I just, I don't know. Um, you know, it's just kind of iffy for me, Azkaban is, but, yeah, it's kind of understanding that that reputation has been built with us as fans because, Bellatrix has escaped, um, you know, people have broken in and out of that place how many times, um, so that's just how I feel about it, but all over, I think it was an awesome story, it's definitely worth my money, I'm glad I read it, and I really hope to one day be able to see the play, but we'll see. Um, it's got me into an even bigger mood, um, even more excited to see Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them when it comes out in November. Um, cannot wait to catch that with my friends that are also um, Harry Potter fans. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope we can have a description. If you guys have read it, please, please, please feel free to leave your comments and uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, how you feel about the story. Uh, my sister's calling me now, so I've got to go.